Happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome into the Gramlick and McLean podcast presented by Ingles, the official supermarket of Gramlick and McLean. And Mac, he is all over the globe, as you guys know. Um, he's in another hotel room, of course. But Mac, tell us where you are. Give us a little sneak peek. But we also, today, we're talking pit. You are not at pit because it never works out that way. But what's going on in the world of Eric McLean? Yeah, where, where's Waldo? Where, where is he today? Um, I'm at Duke, Duke University. Let's go. I uh, got to hang out with Graham Barton earlier today, who's a freak, uh, really good looking prospect. It's always fun when you get to see those guys like outside of shoulder pads. And I was like, dang, that's a good looking offensive <laughs> lineman right there. Uh, and, and just got to hang out with some, some Duke people. We'll actually record the episode uh, tomorrow for Duke, the, the ACC Roadshow. Got to play a little golf with my boy EJ. So it's uh, it, it's all good. It's a great time to be here. And uh, yeah, we're on Tobacco Road for the rest of the week. So you'll see me in this hotel for the next two or three episodes, y'all. That's right. And okay, Mac, you know uh, which program is probably tired of hearing about Tobacco Road? I think it's Pitt. I mean, North Carolina ranked in the preseason top 25. We're going to talk about North Carolina on Friday. Pitt not ranked coming off the kind of season Pitt had. I, I, I've i got questions about that considering I know people are saying, well, they lost a lot on defense. You had first round pick Elijah Cancy. You had a bunch of other guys that went to the league, but Pitt just reloads, Mac. So we got to talk some Pitt Panthers today with Pat Narduzzi. Um, but one thing that they don't have in Pittsburgh, sadly, is an Ingles. And I feel so badly for them, Mac. I mean, I know that our people over at Ingles, they're always looking to expand. Um, maybe Pittsburgh should be next. Yeah. You know, where, where do you do your food shopping? Up in Pittsburgh. You go to the, the local <laughs> Wawa. I mean, come on. We got to figure this out, people. Get you an Ingles Wawa. up there. Well, you know, and, and yeah, it, it's the absolute best. And it's tailgating season. We're getting close. <laughs> If y'all saw on my social media pages, on our TikTok, by the way, Kelly and I, I wasn't going to plug this, but here we go. Kelly and I are officially 17 years old, and we joined TikTok. <laughs> uh, the movement, in all seriousness, about you know the, the cyber security and all that, I have no idea. It's Kelly's account, so all of her information will get stolen. But from an editing standpoint and capabilities, it's actually really cool. So I'm excited. The fun content y'all are going to go see. Go follow our TikTok. If you don't have one, join the 17-year-old like us uh, and, and make it happen. But anyway, they don't have an English. And if y'all saw, I made a sick seafood boil. And it was so good. Everything you need, you can go get at Ingles. Crab legs, shrimp, potatoes, corn. We did some okra, green beans. It was so good. And then the spices. I actually ordered some of the spices offline. I won't tell anybody that. Uh, but... It was so good. Got all the recipes right there. And again, y'all know how much I love that produce section, but the seafood section was popping. Mm. Got to get you some Ingles. So before we talk to Coach Narduzzi, here's a quick message from our friends over at Ingles. At Ingles, we're proud to work with hundreds of local farms and businesses in the communities we call home. Not only does it ensure that you get top quality, fresh items for your family table, it's a way for us to support the amazing individuals who pour their heart and soul into delivering the very best they can do. Quality, freshness, community, it's all in the bag. Ingles, low prices, love the savings. Coach Narduzzi back joining us on the podcast. Man, this is a little bit different, uh, you know, than, than some of the coaches because we're a little bit later in the year now. You're, you're in the middle of practices. You gave the guys the day off today. So I just want to hit it from the top, man. How's camp been? How are things going? Well, oh, great. Um, you know, I, I like how we practice. I like how we have to set up. You know, we do a lot of sports science stuff. So mm. we practice three days. Okay. Spider, spider shells. Okay. And then we went into a day off. Uh, wow. And I think there's so much to making sure our kids are healthy. Yeah. You know, a couple of years ago, the NCAA gave us two extra days of, 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 you know, rest. And it's so critical. You know, you remember back in the days, you know, the two a days. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was around for three a days. <laughs> That's um, bizarre. <laughs> and nowadays we got days off. Like, it right. was, you know, not, it's unheard of. So I think it's great that we've got those, you know, so we're keeping our guys healthy and fresh. You know, there's nothing worse than getting into camp and going day after day after day and going through the injury report, not having mm -hmm. guys. Right. I'm happy with where we are. So we had three days, day off, three days, day off. And now we go into a four day stretch. So we kind of taper it to a point where they get used to a four days. And right. then, then we'll go into actually a five day where they get no day off and it just sure. kind of wean them into it instead of starting off six days. I've heard of some right. teams that are going six days and a day off and I'm like, whoa, 
Yeah. You know, you're going to end up guys tagged up and injured and, and, and you know, because eventually guys are going to get hurt. No doubt. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, we've already seen some crucial injuries out of certain camps. So I know yeah. you guys are trying to avoid that at this point, Coach. And yes, we'll, we'll yeah. knock on wood for you. Well, let, let's start with kind of the big storyline that everybody's looking at with Pitt. And it's your new quarterback, Phil Jerkovic, who's a hometown kid, comes back from Boston College. I know you've spoken about what you liked about him, but let's just look at the the present, the here and now. How has he been uh, fitting in, leading, and, and doing in fall camp so far? You know, Phil's doing great. And really, the whole entire quarterback room is doing well. And I hate to single out and say he's the guy. Sure. Sure. And you're in competition, as you know. But Phil, you know, came out of spring ball as a starter. He's progressed, still be the guy right now. It's funny, his his completion numbers in team periods are like 70%, and yeah. then he gets a skelly, and it's like 60%. So, like, <laughs> he's a guy who likes to be under fire. He'd rather that D-line be chasing after him and complete passes. That's kind of how he is as a competitor. But he's really done a nice job. We've been impressed with Christian as well, Nate Yarnell. Um, and even, shoot, Ty Dippenbach, our you know, young freshman um, quarterback, came in yesterday and appeared and ran a you know zone read down the sideline for about 45 yards for a touchdown. It was like, oof. You know, he's got talent, too. So we're excited about that that whole quarterback room. Yeah, I don't know how much Phil Dracovic is excited when he sees those pit helmets chasing him. You guys did sack him a career high uh, that he's ever had. So I know he's excited to not be hit by those guys and to now be on their side. Uh, Coach, how, how about the running game? Um, because I, I'm under the impression this is, you know, the, the best offensive line, one of the best offensive lines you've had. Of course, we have to go play. Uh, but you also have a stacked stable in that running back room that's obviously led by Ronnie. And I think the sky's the limit for those guys. Yeah, we've got a lot of work to go. You know, there's no question about it. I'm going to go back to Phil getting hit by our D-line. <laughs> Phil won that game, by the way. He did win. And he did he won, win. All those hits don't there matter. There you go. <laughs> um, but he won the game. He's a competitor. He's tough. He and we hit him and he still came back for more. Uh, that's the most impressive thing about it. But going back to the run game, the <laughs> offensive line, and, and, and as you said, we got to go play the game. Um, you know, we lost Izzy Abandacanda with the, you know, with the the Jets, and he had yep. a nice touchdown run the other day and shows his speed. So, you know, those guys in that running back room still have big shoes to fill. Um, and, you know, and again, our old line is always a work in progress. You know, you're always going to get banged up on the old line, as you know. Sure. Um, so you got, you know, different pieces moving around, um, you know, e- even with a day off every once in a while. So, um, you know, it's a work in progress, but we, we feel good about not only, you know, the guys that are blocking and the guys that are running with that ball, uh, even though you lose guys, but we feel good with the, you know, the scheme and it's, mm-hmm. you know, we want to run the football. That's kind of who we are in Pittsburgh is that Pittsburgh tough offense. It's going to, you know, want to run line up and, you know, our goal is to rush for 150 yards a game. I mean, yeah. and I think a lot of teams have that goal, but like, that's, that's our goal. We want to hold people under hundred yards rushing and we want to rush for 150 and that's going to how, you know, how it's going to go in Pittsburgh. Coach, what about these other playmakers you return, Mumfield, Means, Bartholomew? What have you been seeing from those key pieces as camp has begun? Yeah, I mean, you see another year better. Um, hmm. I'll start with Gavin Kelly. I mean, this guy's been – he's a totally different player. I mean, the guys hmm. that saw him last year, you know, they saw him catch the ball and get, you know, jump over people and hurdle people. But what they didn't really see is the the new Gavin that, that's now blocking and blocking at a high level. <laughs> You know, uh, he's blocking like an old lineman, okay? Eric, That's awesome. He's blocking like an old lineman. Makes he's, me happy. You know, <laughs> and he's running faster. I mean, wow. he's, he's running like a receiver. So wow. I think he has become the complete tight end. Where last year, you're, you know, you're kind of like, come on, Gavin, let's go finish the block, finish the block. Now he's finishing blocks on our defensive guys, which is not easy. Yeah. Um, but I've watched him. I'm like, whoa, is that Gavin? Who is that guy? <laughs> um, so he's really stepped it up, um, uh, you know, from even from what we saw in spring ball. So it's a great job by our offense, you know, and the fundamentals and the teaching that we've got going on. And Bub Means and Kanate keep getting better. I mean, Bub Means had a, you know, big time, you know, high point contested catch the other day in practice, which is something we wanted to see more out of him. Uh, we know he can be a deep ball threat. He's got great hands. He can run. He's really fast. Um, so we're, we're excited about both him and, you know, Kanate. And Kanate's catching deep balls as well, which was one of his goals of, you know, doing that more than just get the ball in his hands and let him be a guy that can beat you with his feet. Yeah. Are, are, are there a couple of other guys coach in that room, maybe both rooms, tight end and wide receiver that maybe you've just seen elevate? Because I know that's the three that, you know, the headliners, everybody kind of knows about and, and has expectations from. But who are maybe some other guys in that group that, that you've seen step up? Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll start with the receiver room because it's been impressive, to be honest with you. We've got we've got four true freshmen that have come in here and you're like, wow, like, come on. 
might be as good a freshman class as I've seen. Wow. And we had two come mid-year, which was, you know, Izzy Polk, a kid from California that did a nice job coming out of spring ball, and you're like, that guy's going to play. Um, and then, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of the other guy that we had come in at mid-year. Um, I don't have a depth chart on me. Uh, <laughs> oh, Lamar Seymour. Lamar Seymour, a kid from, you know, from South Florida that came in, and, you you know, you saw talent. Um, and then, you know, then – Fast forward to fall camp here, and then we've had a kid named Zion Fowler L come in, and like he's a football player uh, from St. Peter's Prep in New Jersey, comes from a great program, you know, great coaching staff. He's coming here with an attitude, and he has turned a lot of heads in in six days of practice already. And then the other guy, you know, Kenny Johnson here, just from the you know middle of the state over in the Harrisburg area. Wow, he caught a bubble yesterday, took it to the house, ran by one of our safeties, wow. you know, that maybe took a bad angle, but maybe he has the speed. <laughs> <laughs> both of those guys, you know, both of those guys have shown a lot. Like now we're sitting there going, okay, after six days, there's going to be two of them for sure play for this year. And I think make a major impact. Uh, I don't know which two it's going to be. We're still, you know, still competing, but I got an idea. I won't tell you now, but I, I don't know if some, some of the guys can be passed to be honest with you. So um, we're excited about those. And then the tight end room, you know, I think as deep a tight end room as we've had, mm. I think um, when you look at, uh, you know, Carter, uh, Carter Johnson, um, who played for us a lot last year? He's he's a year better. He's slimmer. He's 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 just tightened up his entire body. He was our most improved player coming out of spring ball. And then the other guy is a guy that nobody knows about, Malcolm Epps, number eighty-seven. When mm. you walk when you walk in the field, you're like, wait a second, who is that guy? <laughs> right. uh, he, he, you know, I'm gonna let him get off the bus first. He get off the smart, bus. smart man. You know, um, <laughs> he's gonna walk off that bus, and you're gonna go, wow. And he's you know, again in his first, you know. First six days of, of camp, he's still trying to figure out it's a totally different offense that he had when he was at the University of Southern Cal, now in the Big Ten. Um, and he, uh, whatever. Uh, but um, he, uh, he, he's, he's impressive, Eric. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a football player. Yeah, Coach, uh, I think you just summed up kind of how I feel and how Mac feels about all that's going on. Just like roll your eyes, whatever. I mean, right. you just, you're just you just saying, let's go spot the ball, let's go play. That's right. So let's I'm play. excited about this offense <laughs> after you rattling off all those names. I do want to talk about the new QBK, or at least the uh, continuation of QBK, because that's just what you guys do. I think it's, what, 199 sacks over the last three years. That's absolutely absurd. Give us some names. I mean, Kalaja Kansi's gone. We know that. First-round pick going to do great in the league. Who can we expect to continue this tradition of QBK? Yeah, you know, someone's got to do it. You know, we've had some great, great D line. Someone's got to do a little study on our linebackers because sometimes I, get, I think they get disrespected. True, true. I don't know how many sacks we've had the last three years and count them on D line, count them on the linebackers. Mm. And obviously we're always rushing for every snap. There's four right. coming. For sure. Then there's, you know, plays probably 33% of the time that we're sending these linebackers, but um, you know, we, we hope we get, you know, sacks on all those guys. And I think it's a, it's the combined effort of what our defense is all about. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, we're going to bring six more, six man pressure more than anybody in this country, period. <laughs> and we might bring it, you know, six man pressure, probably maybe 15 to 20% more than anybody in the country. Wow. So we're bringing Come six on. more than anybody. Um, we're a little safer doing it. We won't get into the X and O's of that, but we bring guys in our, you know, Bengali Kamara, an outside linebacker. I mean, he 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 gets after it. Shane Simon, our linebacker inside, uh, Brandon George. Uh, but these linebackers and what they do, how they do it, have been impressive. Um, and then the, the QBK, you know, Kelly, I you know, I'm going to go back. That it's a it's a work in progress right now. I think Dayon Hayes is the one guy that like I feel like he can have a good year if we keep him in line and doing all the right things. Um, that that other defensive end position is still. Um, you know, a work in progress. I think inside our guys are really solid. You know, I don't think we have a Kalijah Cansey per se, first rounder that's twitchy like Eric was back in the day when he played. Um, that was a joke. I'm just kidding. Um, but um, but we've got, I mean, David Green, Bentley, um, you know, uh, a kid named uh, Devin Danielson, who's really had a great camp. Um, you know, uh, Sean Fitzsimmons. I mean, we got guys inside and I'm missing. There's one more I'm missing. There's five dudes inside that like, we're going to be really, really solid, except maybe not that elite, you know, pass rushing guy that we had a year ago, but how sure. many people have a first round D tackle every year. Right. Uh, but you know, as far as just depth in that position, uh, we feel really good. I, I will say we, we've spoken to a couple of your defensive linemen in the past and they have been pretty stern on, Linebackers are not invited to QBK coach. So when we mentioned that, see that's where it came from. Because they out. take credit. 
That's yeah, right. it's true. They yeah. steal all the credit. It's your own guys doing though. it. <laughs> you shouldn't, you know, again, I say always, it's we, we, not me, me. That's right. right? That's right. That's, That's kind right. of the me, me in there. But, uh, and again, it, we, however it goes, it doesn't matter. You know, we all, you know, if it's a D line making the sacks, we all celebrate together. If it's a linebackers or, you know, we bring corners too. I mean, yeah. you know, that's the pressure, you know, that core is, is going to be blitzing as well. And I can see AJ Woods, you know, <laughs> hitting a couple of quarterbacks in the back of the head when they don't see it coming. Come that on, race. baby. Come on. You get me um, excited, so, Coach. So we get, you know, we bring quarter pressure more than anybody in the country too, probably, yeah. if, if you had to add it up. So, you know, we're, we're excited about, you know, we try to get everybody involved in that blitz game, even the safeties mm -hmm. as well. Um, so I think, you know, um, I hope our QBK is like it was, and I hope we can keep that tradition going. That's right. Well, Coach, you mentioned the blitzing, and I'm sure I've asked you this before, but – where does that mindset and mentality come from? I mean, to, to be able to hang your hat and say, we do blitz more than anybody. We do bring more exotic things. And, oh, by the way, the numbers match up and we're successful. Why do you take those risks? Why do you do you feel like that's a major part of your program? Well, I've been doing it since I was at Rhode Island. I don't even know what year it was at Rhode Island back in the day. Um, you know, left Rhode Island, didn't do it for three years with Joe Novak at Northern Illinois because I was just a linebacker coach. And then brought it back in 2003. Uh, in Miami of Ohio, when we won a big t or an AC, a, a MAC championship, I should say, um, and been doing it ever since. And it's been really our equalizer. You know, you talk about the mm -hmm. option and equalizers. Our pressure is an equalizer. But Eric, it is not. It's easy, okay, because of the way we do it. And there is no stress. Like I get, like I don't get nervous when we call it. It's like that's. It's like calm base defense, right? Um, because we do it a little bit. <laughs> it's different. your base defense. Pressure yeah. is your base defense. Pressure is our base defense. But we play four down and rush four and play defense. Play sure. a lot of quarters. And then we're going to look like four down and we're going to be bringing six guys, you know, could be a corner, could be a safety, could be, a, you know, two linebackers, but we got all these different, you know, uh, areas of different blitzes that we're going to bring at people and depending on what the protections are and all that. So, and we're playing three deep. Okay. So we're not making, you know, most people when they bring six guys and I know Kelly knows this, but I got to teach Eric this football here. Uh, usually when we bring six, you know, people are playing man coverage, right, right Kelly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're not playing any America. I don't want to play. You know, we may play 15, 20 snaps of American coverage a year. Maybe right. we want to get down the red zone. But mm -hmm. We're not playing man. We're playing zone. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it, you know, really not risky at all. It's really, right. it's easy. Yeah, makes Love sense. It. Coach, I, I know you've been asked this as well, but I want to get a fresh take, a, a 2023 Coach Narduzzi take on this. Two straight top 25 finishes for you guys. Of course, ACC champs two years ago. I just saw the coaches poll come out. The AP isn't out yet. I know you, you're, you know, waiting for bated breath on these. Uh, no pit. What? What's you up with that, coach? Poll I didn't even know that. So no, not in the coaches poll. What's Breaking up with that? News. There you go. You know, it's, it's uh, ridiculous. Disrespect. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, we beat UCLA, and they end up in front of us. You know. <laughs> I mean, there's some coaches that are just pit haters. You know. Whether they're in the state or or, right. or got beat by us, or like I ain't voting for him in the, in the coach's poll. I'm sure the AP will be the same way. Um, we just keep playing, Kelly. You know, um, you know, I don't worry about those polls. You know, the hard, once you're not in the top 25 to start off with, it's hard to break break in. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. You know, it takes four or five games, and then by that time, right. you can never get in the top 10 because you know because of that. But um, you know, historically, that's just kind of the way it is. And, that's right. And uh, we just got to we just got to win another ACC championship, wake some people up. Get there it going. Go. Get it going, Coach. It's always so fun to talk with you. I appreciate your time and, and jacked up for this season, man. I think uh, keep that disrespect rolling. I think the Pitt Panthers will be just fine. We'll, we will be fine. That's, that's a guarantee. <laughs>Narduzzi for joining us. We always love talking with Pat Narduzzi. He, Mac, we, we love talking with a lot of different coaches. I mean, Mac Brown is always great to talk to. We have him coming up on Friday. Davo Sweeney is a great guy to talk to, but it's hard to find someone more entertaining and more just, I'm going to tell you what's up than Pat Narduzzi. That's why I love talking to him. The Narduz keeps it 100 all the time. No matter if you like it, don't <laughs> like it, He's going to keep it real with you. And big shout out to EJ Borghetti as well. Of course, our guy for making all of that happen a little bit different. We got coached pretty late. Uh, they're in the middle of the daggum practice mm -hmm. and, and camp. And, you know, he gets to see all that fun stuff. So it's a little bit, you know, more real than if we talk to somebody in like June, right? Cause this is happening as we're seeing it. So it was great to talk with him. Great to talk about these Panthers KG. Yes, it was. Now let's get into these Panthers and where we think Pitt 
could end up. I, I mean, as we always have every single year, I, I feel like people are sleeping on Pitt a little bit, but I also think Pitt is fine with that. They're good with it. They, they're used to that. So let's talk about this offense. This is a team that went nine and four last year. Of course, you know, had kind of a rotating quarterback situation. Now they bring in Phil Dracovic from Boston College. They lose Izzy Abanacanda on offense. He's, he's a big loss, but it feels like the running back room is going to be okay. Let's just start with Dracovic. What? And I, I loved how Coach Narduzzi said it's still a competition. When we had spoken with him, this was a couple weeks ago. But Mac, is this is this Jerk's job? And and what do you expect from him? Yeah, well, I, you know, it's not the greatest thing to hear that, right? You know, when when you think you have a guy and and you think that he's going to be leading your team. Um, and then that makes me just think of, okay, are, are things not happening in practice the right way? Is he not executing in a high level? We'll see. You know, it's going to be interesting. I, I'm going to assume that it is his job, um, you know, based on what we've seen from him in the past and, you know, the fact that he's reconnecting with Frank Signetti Jr. there, comfortability mm-hmm. with the system, mm-hmm. communication, all those different things, what each other like to do. Um, so I think I think I am going to just assume that it is his job, and that, that's obviously a great start. Now – you have to get the consistent play. You have to get a guy who can stand in there, be the guy, lead the team, and really get things going. And I think Pitt missed that last year, you know, dealing with injury or inconsistencies at the quarterback position. And, you know, obviously you're hoping that this can help because Phil has a massive arm, great athleticism, you know, sneaky athlete who, you know, I remember the, the time I called his game on his first games back. This dude's flying over people, you know, for rushing touchdowns. You know, he, he's that type of guy. Um, now, do I think he's going to command a, a huddle or a locker room? Probably not, but uh, he's one of those guys that lead by example. So, you know, obviously you're interested in that. And then really you got, KG, you got to look at this wide receiver core. You know, I think that there's guys that are ready. When I look at Conta Mumfield and when I look at Bub Means and, of course, mm-hmm. our guy Gavin Bartholomew at the tight end position. But, again, from from those two wide receivers – you got to be consistent. You have to be playmakers to catch the ball, secure the ball in big time games and, and deliver. That's going to be an absolute key for this offense, KG. Yeah, it is. And yeah. I think, you know, we know Phil Jerkovic is uber talented. We know that he can be an NFL guy. I think it's just putting this all together in this new system, even though it's an OC he's very familiar with. Um, And hopefully behind a better offensive line, it's got to be better than BC's last year and staying healthy. You know, that's the biggest key. Pitt had issues with quarterback injuries last year. Dracovic has to stay healthy this year. But the good news, Mac, and I I think this wide receiver room, uh, Narduzzi was super excited about these wide receivers and some of these freshmen to keep an eye on that he talked about. But for me, this running back room is loaded. I think this running back room is going to be paired with the offensive line truly the heart and soul of this team offensively. And that can really help Jerk if he has a a solid running game. Exactly. And it just alleviates stress, right? I mean, again, you bring up Boston College and and having to run for his life. I mean, there's times I'm watching the tape on, you know, BC and and just the technique of the guy just weren't ready to play. You know, and they had to because of injury at Boston College. And certainly that, you hope, will make them better later. But, you know, right now it doesn't help your quarterback who's having to run for his life. So there's going to be an upgrade there. He's going to be better protected. And then you're right. You know, BC also could not run the football last year. That's going to be a much different story for Pittsburgh. When I look at this room, Rodney Hammond Jr. is an absolute monster. Sebo Flem- mm-hmm. Flemister, monster. Derek Davis, Daniel Carter. Like, they have dudes. It is loaded. And so, you know, it, it, it'll be interesting to someone step up. Does Rodney st- step up and become kind of a bell cow? Or do, are they just fresh? Hey, three, four, five carries? Get out. Next guy in. Do the same thing. Um, so I, I am very interested, Kelly, to see the system, to see if, if there's 50-50 balance or are they 60-40 run, where do they want to be, and there's play action over the top. So, you know, I, I think, honestly, the 60-40 might be the favor of, of what, you know, people want to do, especially, you know, coach, right? Like, he's a defensive guy. Don't turn it over. Control yeah. the game. Or score some points every now and again. Um, I think he'd be just fine with that. <laughs> Yeah, and I think this run game is going to be just a huge part of what they do. And we know Izzy last year, 100 yards nine times, I believe. So it might be a situation where they ride the hot hand. If if right. a guy's hot in a certain game, you go with him. But this running back room is just going to be really, really good. Yeah. And, Mac, something that I found on these Pitt Panthers that I find very interesting and very positive for this team, Pitt has a group of 28 seniors. That includes seniors and redshirt seniors on this team. 
That's ridiculous. I mean, and we've talked, this is on the Florida State episode, I talked about this with Jordan Travis. I think one of the best ways to be consistently good in college football is to get old and stay old. And Pitt has done that, Mac. That That's a pretty crazy stat. Yeah. You, you know, it's funny you, you mentioned that, get old and stay old. That That's like the problem for basketball, right, in, in college. College basketball, that, that's what, man, you see teams like Kansas. You see teams who are trying to figure that out uh, and, and be that and win in national championships. Like, that, that's where you are right now um, where how can you do that on the football side and how can you go fill these needs that you have, whether it's a transfer portal or that extra year, which I don't know when that runs out. We've got to be close, right? It's, it's got to be soon that that coach. I believe year. this is the last year. Yeah. yeah. That'll start to slow things down a little bit. Um, but <laughs> yeah, yeah just how can you go get guys and how can you find them? I mean, look at these pit offensive linemen. These guys have been here for a long time and certainly going to reap the benefits of that. All right, Mac, it's time to talk what uh, Coach Narduzzi wishes we had started with after talking <laughs> with him in this the defense at Pitt. And I wrote this down. I loved what Coach Narduzzi said here. He said, look, guys, we bring six-man pressure 15 to 20% more than anybody else in the country. And that's why they had 50 sacks last year. They lead the nation in sacks since 2019, I believe. They also had 14 picks last year, four pick sixes from that secondary. And I guess, you know, linebackers getting involved in that too. We always say with Pitt, well, they're going to be fine. They just reload every year. Is that true, Matt? Can they just reload again? It, it is what they do. I mean, it's funny. You talk about that blitz. I mean, his, his base defense is blitzing. Like, that. that's just what they yeah. – That's who they are, you know, at this point. They're, they're going to send pressure. They want to put the offense in adverse situations and make them super uncomfortable, and, and they're great at it. And, you know, what's interesting, I thought what he said in, in that, you know, we we thought it was man-to-man -man that they would play in the back, and it's not. You know, he's talking about zone and quarters yeah. and – and all these different things that they run um that was fascinating you know just to hear from him and how they make it look uh because they're going to stress their corners they're going to put a lot on them and ask a, a bunch from them but you know when i look at these key returners and guys that are going to have to step up and, and have really big years i think Dayon hayes uh is the next guy at the defensive end defensive line position uh, i think he's going to wreak havoc um i remember uh, kalaja and a couple other guys talking about him uh, for a couple years now and, and it's his job it's his you know kind of defensive line there david green mm -hmm. on the defense has you know really just been a, a a solid piece for for many many years how can he take a step forward and uh you know maybe step closer to stardom uh shane simon I, was man he's a, he's a great piece right the things that he can do for you at the linebacker position and coach coach corrected us right we're talking about qbk and this defensive line he's like hold on now don't yeah. forget about all the boys at the second level. Like, they bring the pain. And, uh, you know, can Shane be that guy? And, of course, MJ Devonshire, you know, at, in the defensive backfield, uh, just just a weapon, the, the next one for Pitt. And, uh, you know, excited to see what they can do because, as you said, this defense just reloads. They just get guys in the right spot who can do, do what the coaches ask, execute at a high level, blitz with their hair on fire, get to the quarterback. I mean, not only schematically, but just – from a technique perspective, I mean, Coach Charlie Partridge does such a great job, probably one of the best position coaches in all of college football with what he gets, uh, you know, with these, it's not five stars, and sometimes it's barely four stars that they're able to get in there, and then he develops them into six stars, first-round draft picks, these monsters by the time they leave, and uh, it's just what they do, KG. They're, they're really good at it. They figured it out, and Coach gets them producing on a high level. It's exactly what they do. QBK, that's what they call it, QB killers. Uh, 199 sacks since 2019, give them which is more. crazy. That's what? The 200 sacks somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, come on. Uh, but that's basically what, 50 a year is yeah. what you're talking about, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah, crazy. All right, Mac, I want to talk about this schedule. And I think, you know, when you're, you're kind of, as you said, which guys are going to emerge, which guys are going to kind of become those stars, I think it's good for Pitt that they open with a game like Wofford, nothing against the Wofford Terriers of Spartanburg, South Carolina, but I think that's better than opening with West Virginia like they did last year, even though they did win that game. When you're replacing all of these, you have a bunch of new faces, even though a lot of these guys, we know what they can do. It's, it's a new sit or a new gelling, if you will, with these guys, but beyond the Wofford Terriers, this schedule is difficult, Eric McLean. And I want to just tell you this and get your reaction because you had this higher. Las Vegas, they over in Vegas, 
has Pitt's win total at six and a half. No. No way. <laughs> yes. No. Pitt? Do they know that these guys have 20-plus wins in the last couple of years? Second, only to Clemson, and they think six and a half. Um, I need to start gambling, KG. There's so much money out there. You could be so rich. You could be so rich. Anyway, uh, that's crazy. Take the over. I'll just go ahead and get to that. Um, but looking at this, I mean, it is difficult. You look at Cincinnati, who is now a P5 in the, the Big 12 for as long as that's a Power 5 conference, uh, at West Virginia, which we know – how crazy that is in the backyard brawl and going to West Virginia, there's going to be burning couches everywhere you look. So be careful, uh, wear a mask. Uh, then Virginia, be careful. You know, UNC, a ranked opponent there who, you know, is what it is. Obviously you have a really great quarterback and, you know, then just can continue in conference play. But I think the the tough stretch is, you know, really when you look at, at Notre Dame and then versus Florida state kind of back to back, I mean, that, that's, that's going to be tough, mm-hmm. you know, obviously traveling the South Bend, um, and even finishing with Duke. I mean, that, that's no joke down here where I'm right in, in Bull City. So, you know, it, it's a tough schedule, uh, but I think that's that's good, right? The ACC is growing. The ACC is getting stronger. It's not just, oh, they have this team, this team, this team. It's like, no, they, they have to play this team. Like, this is going to be tough. Um, and, of course, we don't know what Louisville's going to be. So, you're right. It is a tough schedule, but still, I feel good about Pitt, who they are. I think they've earned that right um and especially if jerk can go at quarterback i mean if, if he's you know yeah. half of what i think he can be you know pittsburgh will be in a really good spot six and a half i oh. normally map right i'm the one who's a little more tempered right okay you're, i think okay. six and a half is a little disrespectful i think it's a little disrespectful <laughs> to this this program now is the schedule tough yes am i guaranteeing nine wins no but am i guaranteeing seven yes they're going to win seven. And I, 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 here's the seven. I think Wofford, Cincinnati, Virginia Tech, Louisville, Wake, Syracuse, BC. Boom. They win those. That's seven. And then, yeah, look, at Duke, that's not a gimme. Notre Dame, Florida State, UNC, West Virginia. I understand. This is a tough schedule. But to look at Pittsburgh and give them six and a half, it, it tells me honestly that you are just being lazy and you're not paying attention. Vegas, sure. you. That's right. You're not paying you attention. People. Lazy. Who are you talking about? You people. You people, Vegas. <laughs> Who is Vegas? You know, when we reference this, who is it? We need to find out. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, who are they, they? Uh, this was fun. You know, we're getting close. It's crazy how quickly we're just buzzing through these things. Game week is like right here. I'm staring it down, thinking about how I never see my daughter again. I already don't see her. I'm on the road all oh. the time. Uh, you know, FaceTime her when you can. But that's it from us, guys. Big shout out again to Pitt, uh, to our guy, Coach Narduzzi, EJ Borghetti. Uh, you guys are the best. Thank you so much for everything that you do for us. And, of course, our partners over at Ingles couldn't do this without them. Uh, but another great episode. Appreciate y'all tuning in. We need you to go over to TikTok. Join the party, baby. Let's go. We're over there. And, of course, YouTube. Jump on in here. Watch this thing. We're having a lot of fun. Uh, OG's over on Apple Podcasts. Rate, review, subscribe. We would greatly appreciate that. But until next time, we'll see y'all. Thank you.